Right, welcome one and all to the NeuroJack, how to estimate NeuroJax uh, webinar today. My name is Lewis Olding, I'm the product manager for NeuroJax and with me today is Mike Chantry, uh, who looks after the retail stores uh, around New Zealand. And as part of the team, you can see here on the screen, we have uh, a new member, Danielle. Uh, she's now looking after the, she's in-store support, so she looks after the Auckland, Waikato Bay of Plenty area. And then, of course, David Khan, who looks after Christchurch, you in the South Island may have met him. We really uh, appreciate you coming along today. Um, and hopefully, when you leave, you'll be feel far more confident when estimating Neurojax um, for your project, or when specifying them, you can maybe be able to run a, a quick estimation um, on behalf of your client. The and like most webinars, we encourage questions. So at the, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the ability to be able to um, use the Q&A feature. Uh, we'll be monitoring that throughout the webinar, so feel free to ask questions. And we'd like to just start by uh, just uh, doing an opening poll, uh, just to engage a bit of reaction from you, but also it helps Mike and I understand who we're talking to. And we'll tailor our, our presentation a little bit to, uh, to, to you. So it's good to see We'll just let that poll populate. Excellent. So, well, let's get uh, started, shall we? Um, we'll ask Mike to um, take us through the NeuroJack overview. Awesome. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, so just to uh, give you a brief overview um, of the NeuroJax, a little bit of the history. So NeuroJax have been on the market in New Zealand for uh, around about 15 years. And they've been used extensively on both uh, commercial and residential projects right throughout New Zealand uh, using uh, Neurojax with tiles, uh, with timber and also with composite decking. Uh, Neurojax are stocked nationwide with placemakers and we also have stock in uh, some bunning stores, uh, tile space, we work closely with them and also many other uh, independent stores around the country. Now some of the features uh, of the Neurojax system uh, by using Neurojax, you can create a level deck surface over a sloping substrate uh, and create a level entry into the home. Uh, the head of the Neurojax self adjusts to four and a half degrees and uh, each Neurojack takes uh, around about one ton of weight. And the height of the Neurojack can be easily adjusted just by uh, winding the thread up and down, or as you can see in the picture there, uh, using the adjustment key uh, in between the tiles to uh, make minor adjustments to the height. And we're very proud to say that uh, Neurojax are made from 100% recycled materials. So there's tiles uh, that can be used over Neurojax. Also Neurojax can be used to support timber decks over membrane and also over concrete. And uh, also uh, Neurojax can be used to uh, support timber decks going out over grass or over dirt by using the Neurospike system. So you can see there Neurospike in the ground, Neurojack on top, and then uh, you're into your deck construction. Now we've got some really good documentation of some projects that we've done uh, using Neurospikes. So feel free to check those out uh, on our website or on our social media, um, Instagram and Facebook. Now that's a really uh, quick overview of some of the features. For more information, uh, feel free to jump on our website neurojack.co.nz and you can check out some of the other webinars that we've done. We go more in depth uh, talking about Neurojax with tiles and Neurojax with timber. But the objective of our webinar today is, uh, like Lewis said, to talk you through how to use our quantity calculator on our website. So if you get some plans uh, come across your desk, uh, you need to price a job with Neurojax or you're doing a job with Neurojax, uh, we want to make that easier for you and show you how to use our uh, quantity calculator. So look, uh, looking at our drawing here on, um, uh, on your screen, you can see the drawing of our house. So Lewis is going to talk you through uh, how to quantify Neurojax uh, going over membrane and using tiles. And then I'll take you through the ground floor uh, plan. And we're going to do a couple of different scenarios there. Uh, we're going to uh, work out a low profile deck going over concrete, then just going over grass and then going over grass and uh, going over concrete. Now for uh, our calculator to uh, work to the best of its ability, 
uh, there's some critical measurements that you need. So uh, number one, obviously you need the dimensions of your deck area. So you need the length uh, and the width. Uh, secondly, we want the dimension from the high point of the membrane to the top of the deck surface. So you can see uh, where the cursor there is, the top of the membrane or that high point to where you want your deck uh, to finish. Then uh, thirdly, we need the buildup of the deck. So in the uh, first section during there, that's the thickness of the tile or the paver. And then for our timber deck down below, we want to know the thickness of the decking and then the thickness of the joist that uh, you, we're going to use. And then lastly, uh, we need to know the pitch of fall that the membrane is on. Obviously, if it's over membrane, it's going to be um, specified on the plan. But if it's on the concrete, that's uh, something that we need to work out. But we'll talk you through how to do that. So they're the four um, critical measurements that uh, you need uh, to put into the calculator. So let's uh, crack on with that first uh, example. And we'll ask Lewis to take us through quantifying Eurojax for tile decks. Thank you, Mikey. Um, as you're probably aware, we've been uh, promoting and selling the Neurojack for uh, Neuralight has for almost 15 years now. And one of the projects is this one here that was Justice Precinct in Christchurch, uh, quite a large project for us. Now, now quantifying um, tiles, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on that same drawing and we're going to just focus in on uh, this membrane deck here. Now, this is a, a make, we'll have to make a few assumptions on, on this deck. Um, so I've drawn out a, a basic plan drawing. Um, you can see here that the ranch sliders are down this one side here. I've made, uh, annotated that in blue. The size of the deck is eight and a half meters by two meters, um, and it has a two degree fall. So those are critical pieces of information. Two degree fall, eight and a half by two meter deck. Also, we need to know that the height at the door threshold. Well, E two AS one dictates one hundred millimeters of height between the bottom of the membrane and the, the door threshold. So that's what we call the membrane upstand. And that needs to be, according to E2AS1, 100 millimeters. So we're just gonna make that assumption that this, that's, the, that that's the case with this project. Now, how do we go about uh, calculating this uh, deck? Well, you go to our website, neurodeck.co.nz. There's a number of great features about the website. Uh, one of the most popular features is our live chat. Um, feature here. You can see that David Kahn is, uh, is actually uh, manning live chat this morning. So if we were to ask a question right there, he'd be able to respond straight away. So we'll just minimize that down um, and we'll go to the quantity calculator. So to find the quantity calculator, go to technical information, Neurojet quantity calculator. And when the quantity calculator uh, comes up, we can scroll down and because the surface we want is tile, click on tile. Now we get into the tile deck quantity calculator. The first section is dimensions. So we just need to transpose the information from here into this section here. So uh, first, first of all, we have a 8.5 meter deck uh, that is long or across the fall. Down the fall, we have a two meter um, dimension going down. Oh, what's going on there? Sorry, giving you a preview of the rest of our, our um, presentation there. Sorry about that. Doesn't happen when you're um, practicing, does it, Mike? Um, so it's a two degree uh, fall going, uh, two degree fall, as we've mentioned. We want to know the deck uh, width down that fall. It's, in this case, it's two meters. Now, what's the tile size, the tile dimensions? Well, we're going to be a little bit tricky here and have a 1200 um, millimeter by 600 millimeter tile. Um, and that's, a, that's a, uh, becoming a more popular format in tile and paver. The gap between the tile and the cladding, so around the perimeter, what gap uh, are you proposing? Uh, E2AS1 requires a 12 millimeter gap, but there are some other options there based on our tile cladding spaces. Have a look at our other webinars or our website to find out what they are. And then the thickness of the tile. Uh, in this case, we're going to choose a 50 mil concrete paver like we saw in that uh, image, um, stone paver like what we saw in the image from the Justice Precinct. And then what's the minimum distance from the top of the deck substrate to the, sh the, um, sh to the membrane? So that's that height again of 100 millimeters E2S1. That's adjustable um, and you can, you can certainly adjust that. And then finally, what's the fall ratio on the deck? Well, we've mentioned that it's already 
two degrees. So we're going to go to a two degree form. From there, we've only got one more question to ask, and that's um, how do you want the tile um, layout? How do you want the uh, set out of the tiles? Do you want to have everything centered or do you want to have a, a full cut tile at the balustrade and a small cut tile at the at the door threshold. And that's popular because especially with narrow balconies, they want to be able to see a full tile as they go out. So let's just choose that um, because we can. So we want to have a cut at the uh, shallow end. Okay. And then because of the format of the of the paver, it's automatically chosen corners and centers, but you can override that to corners, centers and edges or just corners only. Um, but we do have some uh, predetermined uh, parameters for that in the system. Right. So we get to the get to the actual uh, results part of the the um, calculator. So we see here we have a profile, the deck profile, and we see starting at the end near the balustrade or near the um, joinery. Sorry, um, that we have a fifty mil fifty mil gap, a fifty mil gap. Um, underneath the paver for the Neurojack. And so that's a Neurojack SE1. And as we go down the fall, we see that it will go right the way to a uh, SE3 and 120 mil gap beneath the paver. So that's the, that's the plan, the, the profile, I should say. We also get a, um, a deck plan. And the first thing you'll notice is that we don't have a full cut tile at this edge here because the system has worked out that the, the, cut, the, the, the small cut tile at this edge would be too small. We wouldn't be able to support it properly on Neurojax. And so it's gone back to a defaulted centralized cut. Uh, so you have a cut tile around the whole perimeter. So it's a nice fail safe um, for when trying to set out your, uh, and getting the right uh, size jacks uh, for that deck. Okay. And then going down to the breakdown. Down the left-hand side here, you have all the information that you've entered. So you can double check that information. But then as we get further, further down, we'll see that it even calculates the quantity of tiles that you will need for that deck. And then on the right hand side, there's all the products that you will need. So in this case, nine SE1s, 25 SE2s, 43 SE3s. And as we go down, further down the page, uh, one tile cladding space of 14 millimeter, which compresses back to 12 mil. So that's a simple, straightforward um, membrane deck with linear four going from uh, a high point to a low point uh, in a, in a, in, with an exterior, external um, gutter or something like that in that frame. But what if, what if that you had a situation like this, where you had multiple falls? Well, let's go back up and we'll just, um, we will have to uh, do a bit of thinking about this one. So we're still gonna have the tiles running the same format. Uh, so 1200 by 600. Um, but what we're gonna do is take this deck in two halves. And so we're going to basically flip this around on, on our calculator. You've probably thought about this and worked it out already, but let's go through the pra practice anyway. So instead of being 8.5 meters long, it's now going to be two meters long and it's now going to be um, 4.25 meters wide because we're going to, we're, what we're doing here again is we're halving this. We're just looking at now at this area. Again, to keep the tiles running in the right direction, we'll need to change the format of those. Um, and but other than that, the information is going to stay the same uh, because this uh, hip that runs through here will likely be 100 millimeters below that um, door threshold. Again, it's two degrees of fall, so we leave that the way that is. And now when we get to the tile um, layout or set out, we have to cut the tiles. We need to change this so that we actually have a deep uh, cut uh, sorry, uh, uh, the, the cut is at the deep end of the, um, of the deck. So we want to have the, 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 the smaller cut tile here with a large full cut tile here. Okay, that's quite critical. Now, as we scroll down the page, 
we can see that the that, that we have a new calculation here for the deck profile. When we go to the plan, we can see that we've got these uh, smaller cut tiles down the deep end of the of the uh, balustrade balcony, I should say, and the large full cut tiles at the shallow end. So the full cut tiles here. And then as we scroll down, we'll get the totals that we need for half of the deck. Now remember, so to get the whole deck, you double that, but then take out that first row of, so the SE ones that will be used here, I'll on double the whole thing and then take out one row because that row is then shared with this deck here. I hope that makes sense. Okay, well, what happens if, uh, the layout is more like this, where you've got uh, a full running across the whole deck and going to an outlet. Well, can the quantity calculator um, calculate for that? The short answer is sort of. <laughs> and what we mean by that is that we, we won't be able to calculate the uh, heights of the jacks involved because uh, you can imagine that you'd have SE1s all around here and all around here and then they'd slowly get progressively taller as they went down into this outlet. But what this, the calculator can do is give you the overall quantity of what is required um, in that whole scenario. And then you can just either apply a ratio or actually go on site, set up a laser and figure out the heights that you need. So it'll still be able to give you the, the number of uh, tiles involved and the, the, the number of jacks that are involved, just not the heights. So I hope that sort of explains the tile side of things. What we're gonna do now is take you through um, the same process, but with estimating for a timber deck and Mike's our timber specialist. So we'll, we'll get him to run through that. Nice, thanks Louis. So uh, for this one, we're gonna look at that ground floor uh, plan uh, on our drawing. And we're gonna imagine that in three different scenarios. So first of all, uh, just concrete, uh, just grass, and then concrete and grass. And those critical measurements that we're looking for again, we want the uh, dimensions of our deck. So we're looking at the length uh, and the width. Uh, for this scenario, we're gonna say it's a five meter by a three meter uh, deck. We need the height from the uh, high point of our substrate to the top of our deck. If it's over membrane, like Louis said, it's uh, around about 100 millimeters. If it's concrete, it's about 150. Uh, and then we need the buildup of our deck. So the thickness of our decking and then the thickness of our joist and also the pitch of fall. Uh, so uh, what angle that concrete is running away from the house on. Now, just a, a little side point here as well. You can see the render right down the bottom, see our deck and then how those baseboards are framed up. Uh, this is just one uh, scenario that you can use if the perimeter of your deck doesn't finish into cladding or into a balustrade, then uh, the builder can just make some droppers down off his joist um, at the boundary there, uh, brace them back up to the joist, and then he can fix his baseboards to uh, those droppers rather than screwing baseboards into the side of the jack because it's not a flat surface um, just yeah a little bit of framing there so just a side point something to keep in mind now the first thing that we're going to see on our uh, quantity uh, calculator on the timber side of things is this placement graph and uh, the size of our joist and the substrate really um, governs how many neurojacks we're going to use because they're going to be at different spacings so just as an example, the most common joist size uh, that we see is a uh, piece of four by two. So we're gonna say that our joist size is 100 by 50, and you can see those joist sizes up the left-hand side there. Now, if we were going out over membrane, we follow that light blue line, and our neurojack spacing under each joist would be at 600 centers. So that's not the joist spacing, but that's neurojacks under the joist. It'd be at 600 if we're using 4 by 2 going over membrane. Same size timber going out over a neuro spike or over concrete, then our neuro jacks would be spaced at a meter uh, going out. So when we put our information into the quantity calculator, that automatically uh, calculates that, but that's uh, just a suggested placement graph. Okay, well, let's get into it. So uh, we have our concrete uh, substrate here. So it's five meters by three meters. Now we'll go down and we'll put uh, our uh, measurements, our critical measurements that we need into the calculator. So the depth of our decking here, we're going to use 21 millimeter decking. Now, 
if we were going to use 19 mil decking, the calculator would uh, would calculate our joist spacing at 400 centers. Uh, if we go 21 millimeters like we've done here, then it uh, calculates it at 450 centers, and then 32 mil decking is 600 centers. So uh, 21 mil decking, that means our joist will be 450 centers max. Uh, the depth of our joist, we're going to use 4 by 2 so we'll keep that at 100. The minimum depth distance from the top of the deck to the substrate, we're going to make that 120 mils. So that's top of concrete to where we want the, our deck to finish at the high point. Uh, the fall ratio, we'll keep that the same, 1.5 degrees. Then we'll go down. So the length of our deck is five meters and the width is three meters. Now our next box is our bearers and substrate. So is the deck over membrane? No. So we'll click no. Do we want to use a bearer? No, because there's not enough height. Do we want to use neurospikes? No, we don't, because we're going straight onto the concrete. So we'll go down to our joist profile, and then uh, so this shows the buildup of our deck. So we can see our decking, our joist. Now our, our first line of neuropads or, or the line of neuropads against the house, we can see the joist is going to get ripped and sat into the neuropads. In our next line coming out, we've got neuropads and shims. And then our last two lines of uh, neurojacks, we've got uh, SEO1s and SEO2s there. And you can also see that it gives us the centers or where we want to space uh, our neurojacks under our joist. If we go down, we can see the deck plan. And this is really awesome when it comes to um, constructing it, basically. We can see exactly where... The calculator has told us that we need our neuropads. So those dark circles are our neuropads. And then the lighter ones are our neurojacks. And we can see how our joists are spaced there. You can see the key at the bottom. So neuropads are the dark ones, uh, neurojacks the lighter ones, and then neurospikes will get to those soon. Now, if we scroll down, uh, this gives us the breakdown. So uh, we've got all our input values that we've put in back at the top. And it also tells us, you can see the, the uh, box there just at the bottom of your screen. If you just scroll down a bit, Louis, uh, you can see the joist quantity. So it tells us how many joists we need. And then it also tells us our joist spacing. So we've got uh, three th uh, 436 there. So we're not going over that 450. And it will tell us as well uh, how far apart our neurojacks are spaced underneath each joist. Then we've got our uh, quantities on the side there. So uh, however many neuropads, uh, neuro uh, shims and uh, jacks that we need. So that's simple for going over concrete. Now we'll go back up and we'll pretend that uh, the same size uh, area is over grass. So we'll uh, keep our decking the same. We'll keep our joist the same. What we're going to change is the minimum distance from the top of the deck to the substrate. We're going to make that 250 mils here. And then our fall ratio, we'll keep that the same as well. Now you might wonder, how do I know the pitch of fall that my grass is on? <laughs> well, there's an, another way that we can check that, but we're going to guesstimate that the grass is falling away from the house here uh, at about that degree. Our deck length and width is the same. So we'll go down to our bearers and substrate. So is our deck over membrane? No, it's over grass. Do we want to use a bearer? Yes. So we'll click yes, and we want to use a 100 by 100 bearer uh, for this. Again, you can change that uh, depending on the job. Do we want to use neurospikes? Yes, because it's all over grass. Now, this last little box here that comes up, the distance from the shallow end where the soil starts. So because that whole area is over grass, that is going to be zero. Uh, in our next example, we'll come back to that and we'll show you where, when and where to change it. So we'll keep that at zero for now because the whole deck is over grass. Then we go down to our joist profile. And again, it shows us the buildup of our deck. So you can see our decking, the joist, the bearer, the neurojack, and then the neurospike in the ground. Also, it's got the centers uh, for our neurospikes and jacks underneath our bearer. And uh, basically shows that the centers for our bearers and then the size neurojacks that we need. So we've got some zeros, 
uh, some SEO2s, SEO3s uh, for this example. And then if we go down again to our deck plan, awesome little plan there of uh, the layout of the deck. So you can see the red dots are the nearest spikes, those thick dark lines, they're our bearers, and then uh, the thin uh, darker lines there are our joists. So if you are uh, putting all those values into the calculator, that basically shows you what the calculator um, has calculated and how it's done it so that you can construct it. So you've got no jacks and spikes and things left over or you don't come up short uh, when you're building it. And if we go down again to our breakdown, so again, we've got all our values in there. It tells us our joist spacing, our joist quantity, our bearer quantity. So it's told us that we, we're going to use four bearers, the size of the bearer, and also uh, the neurojack spacing along the bearer. So that'll uh, help us to know where we want to put our neurojacks. And then on the other side, uh, it's given us a, a complete rundown of what we need. So that's cool. Now for the last uh, example, we're, we're going to imagine that there is a concrete pathway running uh, off the house. So we'll keep uh, all of those deck dimensions the same. We'll just go down to our bearers and substrate here. Now we're going to say that this pathway is coming off uh, the house at 1.5 meters. So we're going to change the distance from the shallow end where the soil starts in that box to 1.5 meters. And then we go down and our joist profile there shows the first two bearer lines and uh, the lines of neurojacks are on concrete. So it deletes the nearest spike, shows those sitting on concrete. And then the last two bearer lines that shows those sitting uh, on the nearest spikes. So if we go down again, that translates that uh, at our deck plan. And we can see uh, it's converted those two first bearer lines to just be sitting on the neurojacks and then the last two uh, on the nearest spikes. So obviously that's uh, the perfect sort of scenario uh, with a deck. Obviously, if you've got a little uh, dog leg or a jut out, uh, you'll need to do those separately, but at least you can see uh, the bulk of the deck is set out this way and that's going to help you um, yeah, give an estimation of what you need. So just to review um, those critical measurements that we need to put into the calculator, obviously we need the area of our deck, so the length and the width. We need the height from the uh, high point of the substrate to where we want our deck to finish. The buildup of our deck, so our joist size and our decking size, and then the pitch of fall as well. So we want to uh, all those things to go into the calculator and that'll help you um, estimate what you need for uh, your project. So. Yeah, we've found a great value in the calculator. We know that you will too when you're um, estimating for plans uh, or you're doing a little uh, home project or a project for a customer. Uh, it's going to uh, be a value to you as well. Thank you, Louis. Back to Thank you. Thank you, Mikey. Appreciate that. A um, couple of questions have uh, just come through. First of all, um, can we buy? Can you buy directly from us at Neurolite? Um, no, we, we, we'll will recommend we can recommend where you can buy them from they're stocked at placemakers and bunnings nationwide at tile space nationwide at midas tiles in christchurch and a number of other tile stores like ambience tiles and a number of tile stores around the country actually and then of course um uh, did i mention tile space um so there's plenty of places that you can buy them um also if you search them on the internet you'll find them available online even during lockdown uh from bunnings and placemakers so uh, feel free to order we're dispatching from our christchurch warehouse at the moment and they've got plenty of stock second question um if the joists are uh, plane gauged should the joist size be 90 millimeters yes um, a four by two 90 millimeters 90 by 45 or um, 50 by 100 um, or 100 by 50 depending on which part of the world you're from um, both that's interchangeable and it doesn't overly affect out the spacing so we just we just state everything as rough sawn and finally um, how are the neurojacks and neuropads affixed to the concrete they don't have to be affixed to the concrete. It's a floated deck system, just like we would over a membrane. Um, however, there are four holes at the base of the neurojack, which can be used to affix things down. Um, but the whole, the whole way that we um, designed the system, it all started over membranes with floated systems. 
and um, we've we've got uh, multiple uh, timber decks over concrete and over neurospikes that have been down for many many years now and they haven't shown um, movement or anything like that so we're very confident that they don't need to be affixed down if you wanted to affix them to something fix them to a, you can fix them down as i've already mentioned or you could affix them to an opposing um, uh, landscaping element or or to the house or to something like that a, a pergola or something like that if you wanted to another option is to use an anchor pile or something like that isn't it mikey yeah, true. Yep. And I think um, we cover that in our other webinar as well. Um, so if yeah, you've got a few questions around uh, methodology, um, check out our other webinars on uh, our website. Yeah, very good. Um, Amber from uh, Cobble Kings uh, down there in Tauranga. Um, if you have two different sizes of pavers being laid and off in an offset pattern, does the calculator do this? No. Um, you might have to bust out the, the scale rule on that one, I'm afraid, Amber. Um, or unless, especially if they're laid side by side in a, a barcode pattern or something like that. No, we can't do that. Um, and is it to, possible to tile directly over grass? Um, we've, wor we've just recently um, worked with Altdure. Um, you might be familiar with them. They supply uh, an aluminium frame system uh, for composite decking and for tiles. And the, using the aluminium frame system over Neurospikes and Neurojacks works very well. We've had a, a test deck down um, for over a year now, about a year and a half in Green Hive, and it's worked really well. So we're about, about ready to launch that with Outdoor. So if you're really interested in having tiles over aluminium frame over the Neurojacks and Neurospikes, that's the only way we can, we'd recommend doing it. Um, and we can help you work with Outdoor on that solution. Um, got a couple of other questions and I, I'm worried that we might run out of time. Uh, just one thing we did actually miss and I, I really wanted to highlight is when you have um, done up your estimation, you can simply press the print deck profile and breakdown button and that will produce uh, a PDF friendly um, uh, printed form, which you can then send to your um, your supplier, whether it be tile space or whether it be uh, placemakers or, car or carters, ITM, whoever it might be. Um, so just simply press that button. Now, if you've done it on your phone, uh, which many of us do, where maybe you're on site and you want to measure it on your phone, we, we actually produce this here at the bottom of the screen, plain text instructions. It has all the points laid out uh, in, as they were in the profile. And um, you can just copy that to your clipboard and again send that to your preferred supplier and they'll be able to quote or, or order the product for you. So just that's something that we did miss from the from the um, webinar. Well, um, we've got time for just one or two more questions. Um, do higher Neurojacks need lateral bracing? Uh, our tallest Neurojack is is the SE14 and it's uh, it's adjustable up to up to 550 millimeters. If you're using an 8x2 bearer and 8x2 joist, um, you're going to be well under a meter, and so that doesn't require bracing if you're under a meter. If you have concerns around that, though, we, we, we've we've um, seen that Neurojax installed actually over a meter tall, and often they're constrained by the surrounds, and so they don't move or anything. But in a typical backyard type scenario, as soon as you need cross bracing, you'd need to go to a traditional prop pile. So we recommend decks under a meter tall for our Neurodex system. Um, I think I've just answered the second question there, Perry. So hopefully that uh, just by answering that. And okay, when estimating plans where no fall is specified and no building. Uh, to laser, so off the plans and they haven't shown the, the falls, uh, what fall would you use? Well, if it's in the Auckland region, the Auckland City Council requires two degrees of fall typically. If it's outside of Auckland uh, and, you, and you're using particularly a, a TPO or a butyl type membrane, it'll be 1.5 degrees fall is what E2AS1 requires. Um, so the, from a pricing point of view though, the taller the jack, the more expensive it is. So we recommend that uh, err on the side of caution by um, maybe estimating at two degrees of fall, because then you can always come back a size in, in the jack rather than go up a size, which will cost you more. Come back and you save a bit of money, you be able to um, go down to the bakery and have morning tea. Well, uh, that brings us to our allotted time. We want to, um, just to, 
uh, finish off here. If you want to know more information about our system, please visit neurojack.co.nz. You've probably already been on that, our website. Uh, definitely use the uh, live chat um, part of our website. It's so, very popular. Um, it's attended to by real people. It's not a robot. Um, there are all of our uh, technical, the whole Neurolight team um, looks after this uh, live chat and uh, we'll and if they can't answer it, they certainly contact Mike and I and we'll, we'll help answer those questions. Another place to go to for up-to-date information on Neurodex, what we're doing, we try and um, post heaps of videos and photos of current projects that we hear about. So subscribe to our um, YouTube, our Facebook and our Instagram um, social media and you'll keep right up to date. Hopefully this has uh, been informative for you all. We really appreciate uh, your uh, attendance. I'd just like to do one more closing poll, uh, just with a couple of basic questions there. We'd like you just to answer if you can. And, um, and then we will let you all get on with your day. It's been a, certainly another challenging few weeks with uh, COVID-19 and lockdown in Auckland here, at level four again for still another week and a half at least. Um, so we hope you're all safe. I hope you're keeping well. And um, thank you very much for using some of your time to, um, uh, to learn a bit more about the Neurojacks. So we'll, we'll leave you to it and um, hope you have a good day. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, everyone.